sitting here in this room is a will. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Mystery Vault Podcast. I'm your host, RJ McCready, and for this episode, I'm going to be telling you guys, or talking to you guys, about the Tunghuska event of 1908, and as some of you might be thinking now, what the hell is that? Or some of you might be saying, yep, I know what that is, or if you like myself, um, I think I've said this before, guys, I literally make this show up as I go along, and I have no list. I just drive down the road and something pops into my head and I think, oh yeah, let's talk about that. On this occasion, I invested in the old PG Tips um, players cards. I don't know if you guys remember that. If anybody grew up in the 70s or 80s, I've spoken to this about Dan Bone on my other show, where as a 10-year-old RJ, I used to go shopping, get the PG Tips, you open up the tea bags, and at the bottom of the tea bags you find some cards. And they could be anything to do with motor racing or sport. On this occasion, it was mystery, and I was this was right up my street. And I found these cards, and it would have like the shrouded terrain. That'd be one I'll be covering in the future. Uh, is it the Ice Man, the Crystal Skull? And I was all over it because I loved all that mystery stuff. So recently, I uh, bought a booklet of that PG Tips, the mystery one, online, and I had looked through it. And I must have missed this one because it was a Tunguska event. It was, an, it was a card with an explosion with a load of animals running away from it. I thought, oh, an explosion, what does that mean? And uh, when I looked into this case, it was just, it, it, it looked to me like it was just a meteorite or an asteroid or a comet that had impacted the Earth, made a big explosion, and that was it. But of course, it's, it's in a mystery book, so it couldn't be that simple, could it? <laughs> so. I thought I'd take a look at it, and as it turns out, there was a an explosion, a massive one, and of course, to this day, scientists can't work out exactly what it was. So that's why I'm here today to talk about this event. So let's have a look at it. A uh, little bit of a synopsis to start off with then. So um, the Tunghuska event was in 1908. It was a massive explosion that occurred over a sparsely populated region of eastern Siberia on the morning of June the 30th, 1908, at approximately, they're saying about 0717 hours uh, a.m. And it flattened an estimated of 80 million trees. 80 million trees, guys. That's a massive area. An area of uh, 2,150 kilometres which is 830 square miles, so it gives you an idea how big this impact was. So it flattened a huge area. Now the cause of the event, as I've said, is, is believed to be a meteorite or a comet and is classified, they've classified it as an impact event of some, of some sort. Um, although, now this is where it gets a bit strange, uh, no impact crater has ever been found. So you've had this huge explosion, but they haven't found any crater. And I've had a look at a few things online with this, I've had a look at a couple of documentaries as well, and scientists have gone to this as a very isolated part of Siberia. And they, to this day, I've had, I've had a look at this, they haven't been able to find any parts of a meteorite or, or, or a comet or any debris which seems a bit strange but what scientists believe and this is very plausible and I quote comet or uh, meteorite uh, they believe that it had disintegrated at an altitude of five to collect ten kilometers or three to six miles before it actually impacted the earth so you actually had um, the explosion in the sky before it impacted the earth so that would probably make sense so you probably had a ball of an explosion which is why you had the trees obliterate in that massive area but the other strange thing I find here is and I think this is what scientists can't work out is okay you've got this explosion but you they still can't find any debris but what is fact about 
this case and it is classed as a mystery because of the circumstances of how it happened is what they do know is that this explosion really did happen and people witnessed it from about 200 miles away and people back in 1908 felt the earth tremble shall we say you know in layman's terms I think it hit about five on a Richter scale across the globe uh, London felt it places in you know Germany um, all over Europe it went across the Atlantic and Washington DC felt the uh, the earth tremor as well uh, I think London even saw the glare of the explosion and it's been recorded as one of the largest impact events recorded on the earth in, in recent history shall we say because there were larger impacts obviously in prehistoric times which we believed was a asteroid which um, wiped out the dinosaurs so 1908 it was a pre-nuclear time so the atomic bomb hadn't been invented or was it there you go i don't know there you go it's just another plot one of those things did they already have it and someone is experimenting with it who knows could be one of those theories and while we're talking about that subject let's talk about that now now as i said i i read about this in the pg tips card i just thought it was a an asteroid or meteorite explosion but as it turns out, because there's that mystery element, scientists have gone now. Get into that in a minute. There was a famous scientist that did visit the, the um, site. But what, what makes me laugh with these is that all the theories then come out. And I didn't realise there was that many theories. There's about 50 in total, maybe a little bit more than that. I mean, you've got, obviously, you've got aliens. As I said before, aliens are always to blame with this, isn't it? You know, if you've got anything like this, just blame the aliens, you know. <laughs> They're just that easy option, um, which is an interesting case actually. They, this is branching out into all different things. There is actually, uh, this is another case that I'll talk about. There's supposed to be the Droper people somewhere in China. Uh, it's another case which I'll look into, but I'll just skim on this. Uh, they believe that there was um, an alien spaceship that crashed many years ago and there are the Droper people that live up in the mountains in China. Uh, there were some Droper stones found which they think were extraterrestrial now it has a connection with this case where um, they believe that there was a rescue mission for these people and the spaceship arrived and it crashed and it caused this massive explosion so there you go that's one of the 50s out of, one of the theories out of 50 uh, there's time travel there's black holes uh, I'm Rick was it I'm Rick Tesla he had something to do with this they believe they believe that he uh, created one of his experiments and he caused this uh, explosion with his new Tesla technology which is another mystery which I'll probably get into as well he went missing um, so yeah there's there's lots of theories like I say there's time travel um, there's one theory that they believe that a, a bomber from the 1950s went through some sort of time leap and ended up going over Tun Tun Hoos school and accidentally dropped an atomic bomb uh, so yeah, there's there's loads of those theories out there. So as as you could imagine, but going back to the actual event itself, just to give you an idea of the actual explosion area, they reckon that it, it, it destroyed an area about the size of London. Now, what is I think it was extremely lucky at the time when you look at this. Um, if it was an hour before or an hour after, this impact site could have gone into um, St. Petersburg. I think that was like an hour before, an hour after Helsinki, and then moving on to Stockholm, Oslo, because those are on the same altitude line as where this it, where this uh, meteorite or asteroid uh, impacted. So, whatever it was in some ways it was lucky that it impacted where it was in this desolate area because could you imagine it hitting uh, one of our cities i think now i think we'll probably be talking about this event a little bit more than just you know a, a mystery in a pg tips card i think it would be this would probably be one of the massive historical events uh say like next to like the hindenburg or or something like that you know um, but no, it was lucky. Luck was on our side. Lucky enough, it, 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 it impacted in an area where it was desolate. And apparently it was a thousand times 
more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb as well. So this thing was big. So I said it was the pre-nuclear age. Let's just talk about 1908. I'd just like to be able to uh, just give you an idea of what was going on back then. So it was like that sort of, when I think of 1908, I sort of think of that sort of steampunk era. Guys were still wearing top hats. Um, some of the event, the other events that were going on that year were the Summer Olympics in London. Uh, Henry Ford Automobile had the Model T, so uh, motor vehicles were just introduced. Um, we were at the very early stages of flight back then. You had the White Wright brothers demonstrating flight. You still had Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid round about this time, and supposed to be in this year, 1908. This is where they had their final showdown in Bolivia, which is a good film. Um, <laughs> but obviously, they were real characters. Uh, the first around the world car race in 1908 as well. I didn't know this. Uh, from New York to Paris, and that makes me. Reminds me of a film that I watched with uh, Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis called The Great Race, which I think is based on that. So it's kind of like sort of Dick Dastardly character where he's trying to sort of stop our hero from uh, trying to win the race, which is a very funny movie. Uh, you also had a solar eclipse this year as well. So that just gives you an idea of what was going on. And obviously, talking about the, sort of the pre-nuclear age, we didn't have any... This was before the World Wars, you know, pre-World War One, World War Two. Um, so people seeing this explosion, if it was today, we'd probably think it was a nuclear bomb that went off, but people wouldn't have been familiar with that. It'd just be like a huge explosion. And the other strange thing that happened here, which is kind of like a tie-on mystery as well, is that London experienced a glow. So as a as a result of this explosion, all the debris that went up into the air, there was like these ice particles and it created a glow. So in most parts of Asia and Europe, they they had a glow. So at night time, you'd be able to walk out and read your newspaper like it's daylight. And they also took photographs without a flash as if it was daytime. So yeah, that, I imagine that was quite a phenomenal event. And back then, obviously, we, you know, they didn't have like social media or communication like we have today. And uh, I imagine for a lot of people, we were thinking, well, you know, what's, what's going on? You know, we've had an earth tremor. There's been a huge explosion. And now we've got a glow in the air. So people must have been thinking all sorts of uh, things. But moving on from 1908, go to two decades further to 1928. And it wasn't until this time, until uh, Russia sent out a scientist to go and research this area to go and find out what was going on. And the the place is so isolated that it took a long time to actually find the location of the impact. And as I mentioned before, to the to the, their surprise, it was actually a scientist called Lenoid Kulik. He was a mineralogist, and. He found the actual location because he found the, the trees that had been spread out and blasted and scorched and to this day they're, they're still there. And he was researching the area but like I say, to his surprise, couldn't find a crater, couldn't find any, any debris. But to give you an idea of this isolated region in Siberia, it is, it is one or the other. It is either really, really hot during the during the summer or really really cold during the winter there's no population out there um, and he went out there during the summertime and because it's quite a swampy area he was attacked by millions and millions of mosquitoes so they had to wear like netting to do all this research could you imagine I can't even sit out in my garden and just have one mosquito flying around me when I'm having a barbecue in the garden Imagine having millions of these mosquitoes flying around whilst you're trying to do some research and then in the scorching heat. It's getting up to about 35 degrees. So he was surprised that he couldn't find the crater, also surprised he couldn't find any debris. He took some data from the land, couldn't find anything. Um, so all he's left with was the trees that had been blown apart and scorched so that they could they could say that this was a site where it happened and he came across some lakes um, 
and they drained the lakes and they thought that they were having like an eureka moment where they thought that this this could be the crater maybe at the bottom here we might find some debris but they didn't find anything so there is nothing to this day it, there's nothing conclusive for a crater or any debris which makes it a mystery so Heinrich he brought this data back to Russia and he was going to continue his research but unfortunately you had the start of World War II and Kulik went to go and fight for the Red Army with the Russians and he never returned so he died and he was unable to continue his, his research but as a result of World War II you had the atomic bomb now this is where the Russians got a little bit more interested and then they sent out scientists to this, to this site to then go from looking for a meteorite to nuclear energy because all of a sudden the Russians thought hang on a second there's been this nuclear bomb or the atom bomb and then this is where the theory comes from and they thought that was well, someone playing around with that back in 1908 so who knows there you go it's part of that 50 theories with the aliens and everything so um that still remains inconclusive to today but with scientists still scratching their heads up until today and they're still going out there and they're researching the site and they're trying to find conclusive evidence to really sort of put a nail onto this and say yeah this is what this is what had what what this did do back in this time was before 1908 people weren't familiar of the dangers from like uh, something coming from deep space and hitting the earth so that 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 impact from either a comet a meteorite or asteroid so this made people more aware so it's kind of done us a favor to think well we need to get onto this we need to start having a look at the skies and doing some research and see if this is going to happen again and scientists believe that this could happen again in the next 300 years and I'll just have a quick look here at the category of what, what could happen. Uh, you've, also, you've got a comet, which is a chunk of ice and rock. Uh, a meteorite, which is a fragment of the asteroid, so that's like a smaller particle. But can, obviously these two can still do the damage. And I think the asteroid is the huge chunk of rock which they believe wiped out the dinosaurs. So that is the, that's the big one, that's the one what we want to try and avoid, that's the one where we need uh, you know Bruce Willis and his band of uh, oil riggers to go up and blow it up as I've mentioned on my other show uh, I'm only jesting but um, I think the actual plausible one out of this which would possibly make sense is that it could have been like a comet that hit the earth because it's made out of chunks of ice and rock so as it was coming through our atmosphere imagine that ice was just starting to break up cause an explosion and then scatter but then but then again when you think about it if it's made up of ice and rock then surely there must be particles unless they just obliterated up in the sky um the other thing they've worked out here just as a rough sort of calculation is that it must have been about 200 feet wide weighing about 220 million pounds going at a speed of 33,000 miles per hour and then it on the impact it or well, the heat from the explosion went up to about 45,000 degrees, so that just gives you an idea. So you don't want to be anywhere near, anywhere near this, and as I said earlier, it was, we're just lucky that it happened where it did. And because it was in a remote area, there were people in Siberia, there was only a very small population, and I guess it's hard to try and record at that time with the, the census, they're, only, they're saying only three people died um, in that impact. And there were lo there were local people in that area, people who pretty much had a had a rough life. Um, they they lived on the land. I think there was like a fur trade out there, and they also believed in a god. And they thought that the the local like tribal people in that area thought that they they did something wrong to the god. And this god was called uh, Aji the god of thunder and they thought that they did something to upset him so there's some local uh, mythology in that area as well so there you go guys that is the Tonhuska event I've just kind of skimmed over it I've had a look at it um, there's not an awful lot more to really talk about this uh, apart from the fact that um, scientists remain 
scratching their heads with this uh, inconclusive they can't like say just put their finger on it and say it was this but what I think it was you know I'll just keep my take an explosion definitely happened oh just to mention one of the other theories as well is one of the scientists said that they believe that it could have actually been a volcano so it could have been something that it's just another theory they reckon it could have been like a blast of energy um, coming from the earth so not a not a spurt of lava as such but a spurt of gas that caused this massive explosion so that was another one of the theories that I put in there um, which is hence the reason why they couldn't find any like debris but then it would have caused the actual trees to have parted so I guess that's kind of plausible but then people are saying that you know 200 miles away they actually saw something coming from from the sky so I, I think it I think we've had a a meteor or meteorite or a comet or something like that has impacted the earth and um, I guess my final thoughts on this one is it is actually quite scary because um, even though scientists are, are inconclusive about this event and what it was what we do know is there are actually asteroids and meteors and comet floating around in the sky and Let's face it, there's a good chance that this could happen again sometime in the in the near future, hopefully a little bit later on, hopefully hopefully never. Um, but it, it it's just a time of when, when this happens again, and are we going to be lucky that it might just impact somewhere isolated in, in Siberia? So I think we were lucky with this one. If it had happened in the, in the Atlantic, I'm sure it probably would have caused a tsunami or something like that. Um... So yeah, it's uh, it's one of the mysteries which, like I say, we're scratching on the head, but it, something really did happen with this compared to some of the other ones where, you know, with the mysteries that I've reviewed where people were going, oh, I don't know whether that's real or not, this one, this one is, we're just trying to work out what exactly um, happened with evidence. But um, yeah, there you go, I thought I'd talk about this one. Um, Hopefully by the time it does happen, we'll just give Bruce Willis a call and get him to send up and go and blow it up for us. So I'm only jesting, but like I say, if you've seen that absolute crazy movie Armageddon, go check it out if you haven't seen it. But it does remind me of that. So uh, as an end result, we got that movie out of this and got us thinking. So um, there you go, guys. I think I've covered everything with that. Uh, there is a little bit more on this event if you go and check it out online. But I think what's got me thinking about it is something that I thought I wasn't actually going to cover this one because I didn't really think there was going to be enough um, to talk about but as as a result it, it does actually branch off into lots of different things as in the glow going over um, most of Europe and Asia and the story about the Droper people and you know an, an alien spacecraft crashing and all the other 50 theories obviously I didn't go into all those theories but there's a lot out there so go and check it out so uh, this one 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 event in the mystery world has caused a little bit of a, a, a stir and a debate and with the scientists and um, and the conspiracy theories and <laughs> all that sort of stuff so yeah go, go and check that out online there's a lot of, there's quite a lot more information on this but um Hopefully that kind of rounds it up. If you've never heard of this event, hopefully now you come away and you kind of know a little bit more about it, which is my main objective. Uh, so there you go, guys. Going to wrap this up now. Uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Um, as always, I'll just uh, throw in a little bit of admin for the show. I am a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network, so please go and check out all the other shows on there, including my other show, which is the Bite Size Cinema Podcast. Uh, you can find the Mystery Vault podcast on iTunes, Spotify, um, YouTube and several other players. If you put in the Mystery Vault podcast into Google, it sends you to a player where you can listen to it. I've also got a Facebook page, so that's where I'm most active. So put anything on there if you want me to have a look at any other mysteries, let me know. Because as I said guys, I really do make this stuff up as I go along. Um, talking about the next, next episode, we're going to be talking about a UFO incident in the 1960s, which was to do with a police officer in the desert who say, states that he saw a flying saucer with its crew, which is the Lonnie Zamora incident. I'll post that on the uh, Facebook page, but that'll be more next episode. So look out for that. That'll be dropping sometime next week. Um, so there you go, guys. As always... 
keep it spooky, keep it safe, keep it mysterious, and keep watching the skies, and I'll see you soon. I think this is a ghost story. I think this is a ghost story. I think this is a ghost story. Because one of you, sitting here in this room, If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.